Hello and thanks for joining us for Talking Europe on France 24. I'm Luke Brown and today we're speaking to the Prime Minister of Albania, Edi Rama, that on the sidelines of the EU Western Balkans Leaders Meters meeting that took place in Brussels. Mr. Rama, thank you very much for joining us uh, for, for the programme. Uh, now, you've been Prime Minister since uh, 2013 and before that you were the Mayor of Tirana, the capital, for a decade. Over the past two decades, Albania has only slowly progressed in its bid to join the European Union. That process of accession for Albania and for other states in the region has been one of the key focuses of this week's meeting here in Brussels, even if it is being overshadowed to a, overshadowed to a certain extent by the war in Ukraine. Just after that meeting uh, here in Brussels, you tweeted that it would be nice if the EU's nice promises were followed up by nice delivery. Uh, what's the biggest source of your frustration at that meeting? First of all, uh, let me go back for a second to your introduction and say that it's not that Albania has made a slow progress but uh, towards the EU, but uh, it's that the EU has slowed down a lot uh, towards the future of itself. And um, today uh, was uh, an exemplary show of uh, this uh, dramatic slowdown and uh, somehow of this um, impotence uh, in front of uh, in front of uh, kidnapping of uh, from a NATO member country namely Bulgaria of two other NATO member countries namely Albania and North Macedonia and uh, it's not uh, frustration that uh, is uh, any any similar to what uh, it used to be before. Uh, once upon a time, I, I used to be frustrated, and uh, now no, not anymore about us, but more about Europe. Uh, it's uh, it feels sad, and uh, I we really feel sorry for for the European Union, and uh, I don't know how we can help. Can you expand on that? Why do you feel sad for the European Union? Because uh, you know, uh, today in this uh, room uh, there were all the countries of the European Union and there were uh, all the leaders and I didn't I didn't hear one of them that did not express uh, did not express uh, you know regret for not being able to fulfill the promise given to us uh, and to North Macedonia and so this is uh, really, you know, something that uh, makes you sad and something that makes you sorry. Well, you said uh, in the uh, post-summit uh, press conference that the EU enlargement process is crooked. Uh, have you run out of patience with the European Union? No. Do you we want to persevere listen, still? Listen, uh, for Albania and the Albanians uh, who are the most pro-European and pro-EU uh, community, and this is, uh, this is based on our history, and but it's uh, it's not the the place and the case to to elaborate on that. Uh, it's very clear that uh, there is no alternative, there is no there is no other way, uh, and it's also very very clear that uh, EU is one thing and Europe is another thing in terms of our belonging to this space. So EU today is one thing. And the European Union as a project, as a vision, as a, as a wonderful idea of the humanity is uh, something else. And for us, Europe is a religion, so there's no question about our destination. We will keep going, whatever it takes, and uh, members or non-members, uh, sooner or later, this is not the most important. The most important is to build in our country and in our region a European Union reality in terms of standards, in terms of functioning of the institutions, in terms of uh, relations between the state and the individuals. So, uh, yeah, this is it. So we, uh, frankly, we didn't come here uh, thinking that something different would happen. Earlier this week, you said to, uh, you and other uh, Western Balkan leaders said you p would perhaps be boycotting we uh, the meeting. It, we, it was not boycotting; it was just not showing up because we don't want to, 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 to you know, to, to witness the embarrassment and all this. You know, uh, there is something crooked in the in the spirit of the enlargement, and uh, this should be addressed for the sake of the European Union, for the sake of of of, of Europe. 
uh, and you mentioned there the EU reality too. Uh, is there an alternative EU reality, perhaps, in, in what has been uh, proposed by Emmanuel Macron, uh, the uh, European political community? Uh, the Serbian president at that press conference was very uh, keen on, on the on the, pro pro the prospect. Is it something that you would be very keen on? We fully support it. Uh, it's not an alternative. Again, it's a new idea. It's a, it's a creative approach towards uh, towards a very clearly uh, problematic reality. And I told them today, and I said also in the press conference, you know, uh, you know look, what is happening is, is, is embarrassing. And uh, then they say Vladimir Putin is sick. OK, he may be sick, he may not be sick, but what, what is happening here is not healthy. It's, it's something else than healthy, you know. So uh, in this sense, I think that the new European political community is a, is a great idea. It's not the first time that a French president comes with an idea that is, uh, that is, let's say, uh, an effort to to reorganize the, infra the the architecture of Europe. Uh, Nicolas Sarkozy has done it before, but uh, somehow I find it much more honest and much more straightforward in a way. Just returning to uh, the process of joining the EU for Albania, one of the big hurdles for you uh, has been the fact that your application process has been coupled to that of North Macedonia, uh, which has been uh, proposed, uh, pre prevented from advancing due to the Bulgarian veto. Uh, are you seeing any, uh, any progress, given that the Bulgarian government has collapsed this week? in part due to the issue of that Bulgarian veto. Uh, are you seeing any progress? Have you any expectation of any pro process? Or would you prefer to be simply decoupled from North Macedonia? If this uh, Bulgarian madness will continue, we have to separate ways in this, in this uh, path. Uh, although we are together in the Open Balkan Initiative and we are together there and we are neighbors and we are inseparable, so neighbors are not, are not there to go anywhere. And we are trying to build a strong relationship with uh, North Macedonia, Serbia and all the others, because uh, our region is uh, uh, the weakest chain uh, of Europe and uh, is, uh, is vulnerable vis-à-vis -vis the Russian aggression conflict. Uh, so we don't want any type of, uh, any type of uh, threat of that sort to endanger the peace uh, we, are, we are building. And uh, as for Bulgaria, I have to say two things. On one hand, I don't enter in the merit of their, of their you know, uh, uh, problems, uh, you know, language, history, although I believe that when history uh, is uh, in the hand of politicians to, to be sorted out, then it's a mess. It's a total mess. And, uh, and uh, what, I, what I find abhorring in the Bulgarian attitude is the way they are trying to do it, because North Macedonia is not uh, there to be a member of the European Union, and so there is no more anything they can do. It's there to start an accession talks that will take ages, and in every, you know, in, this, uh, in these buildings, it's uh, labyrinths are built in a way that in every corner there is a trick, in every uh, turn is a trap, in every place they can block you. So it's not that uh, you know the issue could not be sorted in a much more you know uh, much more uh, you know elegant and much more constructive manner and much more correct by giving time to time. Uh, anyhow, this is uh, this is the thing. And in the Balkans, we are so much, uh, you know, so much, uh, you know, interconnected that trying to find who is the oldest, who is the more antique, who was the first after the monkey to follow the Darwinian uh, evolution becomes really very, very hard, you know, because if you ask Albanians, they think they were the first to live in this planet. If you go to the Greeks, of course, they think you are Greek. And uh, if you go to the Turks, they'll have, they have their version. And so the Macedonians and those, so the Serbs and so, you know, we cannot end if we enter in this. This is something for historians, this is something for scholars, this is something for better times to deal with. It's not for politicians. It's not, uh, you know, because then it's used like the missing uh, fuel, okay, the missing fuel of this wartime for the, 
for the nationalist uh, war machine. One final question. Uh, the Ukraine, you've mentioned the Russian aggression. Ukraine is set to be accorded uh, most likely uh, EU candidate status. Uh, that's something they've achieved in about 120 days. It's something that Albania took five years. Um, are you worried about being leapfrogged in the queue to join the no, EU? No, no, no. Kind of status is a kind of antidepressive pill that uh, you get and uh, it boosts your morale, it uh, boosts your hormones to to go further uh, for a certain while, but then you realize that, uh, you know, there is much more to do. And uh, the only thing is that I hope that the Ukrainians will not have to wait uh, 170 years uh, like uh, the Macedonians uh, are waiting 17. So uh, it's uh, just about that. But it's good that they have it because it's really a pill that works for the countries. And they wanted it desperately. And uh, they deserve it. Absolutely, they deserve it. Maybe they are behind with the reforms, but they are, they are uh, preventing the advancement of the most uh, scary counter-reform of the world that Putin wants to put in place. So, uh, you know, that this is it. But I don't think that... Uh, I, I, it never crossed my mind that uh, it's unfair. It's very fair to recognize uh, the Ukrainians as, uh, as, uh, as really, uh, you know, f uh, a nation that is doing a lot for all of us. Okay. Eddie Rama, uh, thank you very much uh, for speaking to us here at France 24 and France 24's uh, Talking Europe. That's all we've got time for in this show. For now, more news and headlines and more European news and headlines after this uh, short break. Do stay tuned.